This video is going to be very different from the other videos in this channel. The reason why, today I'm going for a day 11 Scottish history at a unique medieval village in the Cairn Valley near Denny. At Duncan Medieval Village, they believe that people learn history best when they can see it. And you know what? I kind of agree with them. So today, I'm going to see how much of Scotland's story we can experience in their Travellers in Time weekend. I'm really excited about it. So if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand side of the screen. In the meantime, let's let them tell us a story. Now, obviously we've got to do a wee drivey bit in order to get there. So whilst we're doing that, it's probably worth pointing out that if you'd like to get the whole history of Scotland in a stand-up comedy show, then I've got a DVD called A History of Scotland, The Rise of the Ginger. And you can buy that along with two other of my theatre stand-up history shows in the shop at www.scotlandhistorytours.co.uk forward slash shop and there's mugs and t-shirts and stuff like that. We'll see when we get there. This is Duncarn Medieval Village, along the beautiful Cairn Valley. More than 5,000 wooden posts to construct a palisade, a lookout tower, longhouse, cabins and workshops, all built by volunteers using traditional medieval construction skills. They've managed to acquire props used in the film and a blockbuster Hollywood films like Robin Hood and Outlaw King. Authentic replica weapons, costumes and equipment. And I'm going to see if we can tell the story of Scotland through the displays that they have here today. When we arrived, we knew we were a medieval Scottish village because we were confronted by two warriors screaming their battle cry. Chibs out! You can imagine the trepidation until the ferocious barbarian on the right said that his name was Liam and he watches my videos. <laughs> Panic over. Jinx, that was a narrow escape, eh? Now we can delve into Scotland's history. I suppose the first written history was when the Roman Tacitus wrote about Agricola's invasion and the first recorded battle on Scottish soil at Mons Graupius. These guys would have been there and clearly had more advanced tactics and equipment. Hold on. There's something out of place here. Roman soldiers with beards? That's better. Although now that I've put a shadow across his face, it looks like he's in one of those porn mags where a Roman legionary comes round to fix your washing machine and then an orgy ensues. The Romans called the indigenous people picked. Hold on. I think I saw that guy in a Pictish porn mag. That's better. A tattoo parlour. That's what Picts are famous for. Picti was a Roman name for painted people. It was a disparaging term that the Romans used for those Britons that hadn't become civilised Romans. You see, when the Romans arrived in Britannia, everyone was painted. Of course, the Romano-British people down south had become Romanised. But this guy on the left, Still runs a tattoo shop in Perth today. When the Romans left, there were influxes of other folk. Angles, Saxons and Vikings. Now these are nice Vikings. They're Polish Vikings. You see, we tend to think about Vikings because the Norse raided our coast and the Danes raided English coast. It's easy to forget that they also went east across land to the Black Sea and attacked Constantinople and got involved with some Slavs along the way. That's how you got Polish Vikings. Obviously not these guys, they are plumbers and Airdrie, but you know what I mean. This guy, on the other hand, is a Viking maker of coins. Much later, when coins became standardised, people would cut a little slice off the edges of lots of coins and melt all the little bits down to make new ones, and they would strike those coins. This was called forging. Now eventually Vikings settled down to farming, leather making and trading. But as the medieval period continued the one thing that was a constant was fighting. Fighting never stopped. 
Of course, the fashion changed somewhat over the generations, and one job that became more and more important was that of a blacksmith. Duncan Village is so authentic that we even had a blacksmith. His name was Patrick. Now, if you're thinking, hold on, he doesn't fit in medieval Scotland, then you're right. He's American. If you're thinking, no, it's the colour I'm worried about, then you're also right. They don't know how to spell it. Do you think you should point out that's a spelling joke rather than a race joke? Nah, those people are switched off anyway. Besides, I've got bigger problems. Remember the Vikings? Well, some of them also invaded France and now these Norsemen are Norman. Then they invaded England, subdued the Saxons, some Saxon royalty fled north and the children of that Saxon queen and our Scottish king went back south and, long story short, the English are now Normans and... Have you ever seen a trebuchet? So, the Scots, who were Celtic but became a bit Norse and a little bit English, were then taken over by the Norse English, who were technically descended from a Saxon and a Celt, have now been invaded by the English French, who are descended from the Norse. There's a baddie called Edward Longshanks, and he's got a trebuchet. Is the actual trebuchet that Edward used in the film Outlaw King? So Edward Longshanks is an actor? No. Christopher Pine's an actor. Edward Longshanks is an evil English overlord. Anyway, a bunch of proud Scotsmen who are heroic Celtic French Normans have to save us from the evil English overlord French Normans who have trebuchets. We don't have trebuchets. We do have men like Sir John de Graham, who's very good with children. William Wallace, who's got a YouTube channel called East Coast Highlander. And Robert the Bruce, a valiant Scotsman who might have been born in London, but trains brave Scotsmen to fight and move in Shilterns so that they can defeat Edward II at the Battle of Bannockburn and give us a song to sing at the rugby. <laughs> For a few years, we were the top dog in the playground, and then a third Edward came and invaded, before he got caught up in the Hundred Years' War. That didn't actually last a hundred years, but it did involve Joan of Arc. She was actually a bit shorter than that. We know because we helped her out when we had a fight with the English in France over herons. It, it's a story for another time. Anyway, there was a renaissance and a reformation and a civil war span in three kingdoms and a lot of kings called James. And somebody invented guns. During that big civil war thing, the English army started to wear red tunics. So... We have English soldiers in red uniforms who became British soldiers in red uniforms who defeated Highlanders in kilts, who if they wanted to keep wearing the kilts had to join the men with the red uniforms. We built colonies for them, and then one of those colonies refused to pay their taxes. Remember Patrick? I knew there was something dodgy about him. Anyway. That didn't go so well and the tax dodgers got away with it. And then they started fighting amongst themselves. Oh, that was a messy business. They spent four years fighting against each other and then they've spent the last 150 years arguing about what it was they were fighting about. Either way, there were Scots fighting on both sides and everyone thinks that they were in the right. Meanwhile, we had more wars where we thought we were in the right. But this time... We weren't Scotland, but Britain. Now, if you're a pedant, don't worry, that mistake was for convenience. The others were accidental, apart from the ones that I did to annoy you. Oh, I forgot to mention, we'd also colonised India. As a tour guide, I've always found Indians to be the most hard-nosed and aggressive when it comes to negotiation. I think it's because the first time they came in contact with the British, we got curries and they got cricket, and they're still trying to recoup their losses. Anyway, it turns out that other European countries wanted colonies as well, which led to yet more fighting. But on the plus side, somebody had invented girled guides in a ready supply of shortbread, so swings and roundabouts. 
Nevertheless, we fought two wars. It wasn't just us. The Canadians cut wood. They're very good at cutting wood, apparently. The Americans had become friendly again, and they got involved. Eventually. And of course, we can't forget the Romans. Of course, at home, don't tell them, Pike! I suppose what I'm trying to say is, there was a good day out at Duncan Village, and I've only given you a snippet to scratch the surface. If you'd like some more snippets of my history tours, then please click the video coming up on screen now. I mean, Doc, it's going to be a lamb of my life. Cheerio and Rasta.